For users that are new to CAD or that come from other CAD applications where sketching works very different, like Inkscape or perhaps Vectorworks, um, sketching in Fusion 360 can be somewhat surprising. So let's, well actually, before we create a sketch, I need to follow my own rule, and that is Fusion 360 rule number one, create a component and activate it. So that's the first thing that most users should do. So here's a new component. New components or freshly created components are activated automatically. Now we can sketch. So I just arbitrarily want to sketch a two-point rectangle. As we can see, it snaps. The point here snaps to the grid. That's fine. If we don't want it to snap to the grid, we can hold the press and hold the command key on a Mac computer. On the Windows computers, it's a control key. I want it to snap, so that completes the uh, two-point rectangle. And we can already see that um, there are some constraints cr automatically created here by Fusion 360. Um, those are visible here by those symbols. In this case, those are the horizontal and vertical constraints and they're automatically applied. So if I pull around on those sketch elements here, like the points or the lines, that uh, rectangle is going to maintain its shape as a rectangle. What we don't see is there are already other constraints that are auto-implied, so to speak. And those are the endpoints of these lines here, or also the endpoints of other geometry like arcs, uh, splines. If they are coincident with another line endpoint or geometry endpoint, they are not they are not shown. That, cons that constraint is there, it's applied, but it's not shown. And we can actually kind of see that if we delete that constraint. So in this case, we can select this point, right click, and delete the coincident. And then we can actually pull those lines apart. Uh, another thing that uh, was visible is when this rectangle was still a closed shape, that it had this orange tint indicating that it was a closed shape. Now that we've uh, actually pulled those lines apart, it's not a closed shape anymore. So now if you want to reapply that constraint, you can just click and drag this point here and it snaps A to the grid, but it also snaps to the other endpoint. And there we see that constraint is automatically applied again. That's this coincident constraint. Now we can also highlight it again and delete that coincident again and apply this manually. I still have this line selected here. So I escape a few times and apply this manually. And it applies that constraint again, but it still doesn't show it. There's one other constraint that is, so to speak, in auto implied or auto applied. And that is when you start geometry on the origin or drag, for example, in this case, the edge point of this, uh, of this rectangle here to the origin, it automatically applies this constraint. We can already see that by those lines turning white, meaning they're, they're constrained. So now you can just pull around on this rectangle, but you can't really pull these lines away from the origin. If you want to do that, in case of the simple rectangle, you left click and hold on this, on this point. And in this case, there are two sketch points. Now it's hard to decide which one is the correct one. And I found, if I use the parents tab, and select the sketch point that shows up there, then if I delete that coincident with that sketch point, my rectangle is again free to move. Now, if you want to move this rectangle, not by just dragging it around, you want it uh, to maintain its shape, you can just right click somewhere here in the open surface, select move, the select your single sketch elements. That's a little tedious, so let's cancel it. You can just go ahead window select this and then uh, apply the move tool and now watch what happens instead of just moving it you see that those uh, constraints that we had initially applied they vanish so fusion assumes when you rotate that of course those uh, those constraints the horizontal vertical constraints they don't apply anymore, so it automatically deletes those. So if you rotate this shape and accept this with OK, it's basically 
the, the rectangle basically doesn't maintain its shape anymore. So how do we get the rectangle to maintain its shape when we want to rotate it? Well, that's very simple. We apply a perpendicular constraint between some lines. Three of those is enough and the rectangle maintains its shape again. If you really want, to, want it to be a very firm rectangle um, with a fixed dimension, you just dimension one of the lines, and give that 70. And then you could, for example, apply an equal constraint, and there you have your fixed rectangle, and you can move that just by dragging it around. Now, do not make that mistake. If you don't want it snapped to the origin point, don't drag it there. Um, in com more complicated sketches where you have not just one rectangle or one corner of a rectangle constrained to your origin point, it gets very tedious to decide which is the correct point to unconstrain. So if you don't want it there, don't put it there. Oh yeah, one last thing before I forget it. Um, of course, it's easy to assume now that this uh, rectangle is fully constrained, except in location, that you can just select one of those lines and move that. But that's not the case. As before with the entire rectangle, if you rotate this or move it, Fusion will remove all violating constraints. So in this case, you know, the perpendicular and the equal constraints uh, they wouldn't apply anymore if you rotate this, so Fusion removes these. So, if you actually want to move that shape, you still have to select everything and then move it. So in that case, Fusion doesn't delete everything because there is no constraint that violates uh, that movement. 